Hi, welcome back to Microsoft Ignite. I am Andy Polak, and today I have the pleasure of talking to three distinguished guests for about, all about the future of data systems. Please welcome Martin Kleppman, Senior Research Associate at the University of Cambridge, Kevin Jans, Independent Contractor, Hacker, and Annette Minusa, Senior Researcher and Lecturer at TU Kaiser Schlautel. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi, Eddie. So today we're going to discuss about a dear topic. We're going to discuss about CRDT. But the first question is, what are CRDT and why we should care? Martin, can you help us understand that, please? Sure, I can start with that. So this, this work is relevant if you've got data in several different places. And so uh, you've got data potentially in database systems, you might have data in, data in several different data centers around the world so that if one data center goes away, you've got multiple copies of it, and then you have to keep the data synchronized in those different data centers. Or you could have data in multiple places because it's an end user device, end user app, and you've actually got data synced to people's phones or people's desktop computers. And again, in all of those cases, you can have several users or several devices updating data at the same time. And then when that happens, you have to make sure that those different updates get synced to the other copies of the data in different places. And this is where CRDT comes in because CRDTs provide us like a techno technology abstraction for syncing data in a way so that even if several users update the data at the same time or several servers in different data, uh, data centers update the data at the same time, they can actually sync and get back into a consistent state. Hmm. Interesting. So there are probably a lot of different use cases where we can use RDT, CRDTs. Annette, which use case are you familiar with that we can use CRDT in? Um, so one area of application is definitely gaming, where you have um, people playing together despite being um, distributed in different physical locations. So the nice thing about CRDTs is that it actually allows users that are close by, like in the same uh, LAN, to um, collaborate and not necessarily go um, via the cloud for synchronization. Um, other typical um, applications are um, collaborative software, especially collaborative editing, um, which is a, yeah, an area where a lot of different algorithms have already been uh, also been explored, and there are different frameworks that do a very great job there, like YJS, where Kevin is involved with. Super cool. So you mentioned collaborative applications. Kevin, how do you use collaborative how do you use CRDTs and collaborative applications? Yeah, I think uh, eventually CRDTs will power collaborative editing on the web, even on any kind of platform, because it has so nice properties. It automatically syncs over any network protocol. Um, you don't really care about the order in which operations arrive, which is great if you want to have a distributed model, if you want to sync your computer directly with your phone in your pocket. I think that's great. But And this also has other applications. Like, for example, if you're a remote worker without a network connection, you can sync your phone as well. And I think this is, for me at least, uh, one of the most interesting topics, peer-to-peer -peer collaboration, peer-to-peer -peer data syncing uh, with remote people without with a bad internet connection. That's really interesting. Kevin, you even created a special open source project just for that. Maybe you can share a bit more about it? Yeah, of course. Uh, I created YJS, which is basically an open framework, open source solution for creating collaborative applications using CRDTs. And it has a huge ecosystem. And I think this is what makes YJS great. Um, it, this ecosystem, it can, includes modules to make certain editors collaborative. For example, we support like eight uh, web editors at the moment, which text editors, uh, code editors, and we can make them collaborative using YJS. But you can also make other things collaborative, for example, uh, 3D applications, uh, 3D modeling, drawing, whiteboarding applications. Uh, it is a huge area. And the cool thing is you can plug it into any network uh, adapter that YGS supports. Uh, for example, you can hook it up to WebRTC, WebSocket, or um, yeah, anything works. And there's also like adapters for um, hooking it up to databases to synchronize the data to a database, to a network device, to uh, your own local database on your browser. 
uh, it's a huge area and you can build fantastic applications with it. Yeah, that sounds really awesome. And definitely the future of data system and specifically how we work with data on the edge. All right, back to you, Annette. Which project are you currently working on? Um, so as a result of uh, two European projects, Syncfree and Litecone, um, we have established an open source database called uh, AntidoteDB that we use for all kinds of research purposes. So the focus there is uh, a bit less on the CRDT algorithms, but more on the synchronization. And uh, we explore different areas like um, how we can have um, a full data synchronization pathway from the cloud to the edge. Um, what kind of um, yeah, synchronization does this involve? What kind of metadata do we maintain? How can we keep things secure and uh, safe? such that all the users have uh, the same great experience and no data is lost and uh, yeah, you get uh, fast, um, uh, low latency access to the, to the data shared. I'm also involved in a um, startup called uh, Concordant.io that also resulted from this work and there we are turning this actually now also into a product. Cool. That's really interesting area. And it's another way how we can use and work with CRDTs to, you know, enable more innovative applications when we work with data. Martin, which project are you working on? Uh, so my main project is an open source uh, JavaScript implementation of CRDTs called AutoMerge. Um, it's quite similar to YJS, Kevin's project uh, in many ways. Um, what we're looking at there is a bunch of algorithms for trying to make this, uh, this type of collaboration data synchronization efficient. Um, so explore different compression methods for that, for example, and different data synchronization methods and maintaining history so that you can look back at what a document looked like in the past and compare different versions, that sort of thing. Cool. So if I'm taking this technologies um, that, you know, Kevin and Marion just mentioned, and I want to take it into an offline works and I want to take it into a rural areas per se, um, what kind of scenario can I use and how can I use this technology to enable uh, people to collaborate on projects where there is poor internet connectivity? Uh, Martin, why did you take this question first? Yeah, this, this is an area where CRDTs really shine and this is something that I'm particularly excited about with the, the work that's happening in this area. Because you know, cloud services are great um, and they're very convenient, but they're only useful if you can connect to the cloud service. And so, if um, if you're somewhere in a rural area with poor internet connectivity, then any communication that has to go via cloud service will not work. And the nice thing about CRDTs is that they allow data synchronization between local devices via, for example, just Bluetooth if they're in the same room, or via local Wi-Fi. Uh, or any other kind of uh, connection, even without going by a cloud service. It doesn't have to go to a different data center that's potentially on a different continent. You can just synchronize data directly between the local devices. And that's incredibly liberating because uh, you know it frees us up to be able to have the same convenience that we have with cloud services of just data real-time synchronizing across multiple devices but without this stranglehold of everything having to go through a cloud and the cloud being this, this, you know, this center that everything has to go through. So basically talking about how we can decentralize our data and not be solely independent into one region or one cloud or anything like that. Like another good example exactly. is Another good example is the disaster management systems. Let's say an earthquake happens and we need to sync between the citizens. So let's say I want to do it with uh, YJS. Kevin, how, how will I integrate YJS into my system? I mean, it really depends, as Martin said, what kind of protocols are available in disaster areas. Um, I guess Bluetooth is a nice uh, protocol that you can use to distribute data, but it has a very uh, low range. Uh, so you want to use something different. Maybe there's um, a Wi-Fi that you can sub set up. There are probably experimental technologies that allow you to uh, broadcast messages um, to anyone who receives these messages. And even this would allow you to just use YGS or AutoMerge uh, or any kind of CRDT 
to um, distribute that data and make it available to all the peers that are uh, that can receive that data. Cool. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So another way to think about is basically the robustness of our services. It's we want to be independent from a, a, a centralized server, and we want to go decentral, and we want to use a decentralized database that you know uh, maybe uh, communicate between different edges or anything of such. Um, Annette, maybe you can share a little bit with us about the consistency and how it works, CRDT and robustness of services. So the consistency is actually kind of a very interesting question because what CRDTs give you is that you are able to reconcile um, updates that have been uh, done by different users in different places such that you can later have a, a common view of the same of the same data and depending on who is viewing the data like if it's if it's users you can actually even propagate part of the conflict resolution or reconciliation to the user um, if it's uh, automized services that kind of get the data later on, there should, of course, be um, yeah, automized uh, reconciliation techniques. Um, the problem that uh, many people face when they kind of try to move their existing applications towards uh, CRDT-like applications is that very often the interleaving of operations and the kind of um, granularity um, of updates becoming visible um, might violate some of the inherent invariants that an application might have. Um, so what we are also trying to do is um, making the simple um, abstraction of a CRDT being a distributed object a bit more robust by allowing updates to occur in transactions, so kind of um, giving users a consistent view, a consistent snapshot of the system, um, bundling updates together such that they become visible together, and this already allows for many um, invariants uh, to be verified to hold true. Um, sometimes you need to revert to something that gives you a bit of uh, a bit stronger consistency. Like if you, for example, have a counter that should not um, pass a certain threshold, then you need to have the different um, instances, the different nodes, um, yeah, come to a conclusion um, on how much they can actually uh, uh, reduce uh, the amount that is that is hidden by the by the counter. So it's a for, for many applications, it's uh, actually kind of a mix of different consistency preserving uh, techniques that makes the yeah, whole experience robust, I would say. Interesting. So basically, we can't take any data type and turn it into a CRDT. We have a limited amount of data type types we can work with and different strategies that we need to pick from for deciding you know, how we are going to uh, work with the specific data types. Um, Martin, can you share a little bit more about the various strategies that we have to work with CRDTs? Yeah, so several different data structures and data types have been developed. Um, so it started with very simple things like um, just a counter that you can increase or decrease, or a register, which is just like a, simple, a single variable where you can update the value. But then people developed it further and developed sets, for example, um, or text documents. So in a text document, anyone can edit the, the document by inserting or deleting characters at any position. Uh, you can have lists in which people can insert or delete list elements. And then now more recently, people have been even developing it towards tree data structures. So you could have something like a file system. Uh, you know, if you've got a synchronized file system like a, a Dropbox or a OneDrive on your computer, you're basically using a data structure like this. You've got a, a tree of folders and, and files within the folders, and you can move folders around. And if you have copies of this data on two different computers, for example, you can update the file system locally on, on each of those computers, even if they're disconnected from the internet. And then later when they come back and they, they reconnect to the internet and they synchronize their changes, you want everyone to end up with the same file system and the same files and the same directories on their computer. And, and that's quite an interesting example where uh, some recent research has been going on on CRDTs to make sure that even for those kind of tree data structures, uh, we can make sure that everybody ends up being consistent. That's really interesting. I definitely need to read more about this research. If you can help us later by sharing the link to the research, that will be awesome. All right, yeah, so we, we know there's different- put together a website. Yeah. Um, which oh. I think you will share, which, which has a, a large collection of, of both academic research work, 
uh, and research papers that people have been doing, but also practical implementations and open source software that people can use. Is that the crdt.tech? Exactly. Fantastic website. Go check it out. All right. So let's imagine you can work on the, the project that you know you dream of. Um, Annette, let's take it with you. Which project will you work on? Um, so my dream project is actually having a, um, a shared um, classroom environment where students can work together on their um, study material and then share via some uh, local uh, connection and or via the cloud such that they can work online, offline, at home, in school and always have um, the material with them. I think COVID has uh, shown us like the, uh, the, the homeschooling situation has shown us that we actually need that and that uh, digital learning um, and support in schools need to be um, updated. So this would be a fun project, I guess. Cool. So we have 10 last seconds. Kevin, what is the uh, project of your dreams? Project of my Wait. dreams. Uh, it's always collaborative editing. I'm so interested in that. It's the coolest area, honestly. Text All right. Editing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think it's safe to say that the future of data systems is here. Um, that's it from me. Um, thank you for having me. And next up, a quick clip from our colleagues at Checkpoint. Please take a look.